Hey everyone, it's Mr. Hua here, and I'm going to go over ions and isotopes. So let's jump into it. Atoms versus ions. So atoms um, are what you see on the periodic table, and these have a neutral charge because we've got the same number of protons and electrons. Uh, so we'll start with ions. Ions have different number of electrons. So this happens when an atom gains or loses electrons. Okay. Uh, we use pluses or minuses to indicate if we've got a positive ion or if we've got a negative ion. If you just see a plus or a minus, then there's a one here that's implied. So that's plus one and that's minus one. Ions are different than their atoms. So if we look at a sodium atom, uh, it reacts violently. It kind of explodes uh, here in water. A chlorine atom is a toxic gas. Um, but when we combine these together into sodium chloride, right, these are two different ions that are completely safe to eat. So atoms are different than their ions. Right, a sodium ion, again, safe to eat. Sodium atom could explode in your mouth. There are two kinds of ions. You've got a cation, the cutest ion ever. Um, so these are positive. Okay, a big old plus there. Uh, and then you've got anions. So as you can tell by this grumpy cat, these are kind of negative Nancy's. <coughs> okay, so let's jump into the differences between these two. Cations have a positive charge. They're formed when electrons are lost. Okay, so when you lose an electron, you end up with more protons than electrons. And so that's how we get a positive charge. So let's look at this next example. Uh, when we compare a sodium atom, right, it's got 11 protons and 11 electrons. So you can think of that as just canceling out. That's how we get a neutral charge. But if we lose an electron, like we see here, it's a little hard to see. Um, but this ion has lost an electron. Now we've got a plus one charge because there are more protons than electrons. So that's how we get a positive charge when you lose electrons. Anions are the opposite, right? They're negatively charged uh, because electrons are being gained. So electrons are negative, so if you have more electrons, it's going to become more negative. Okay, in this table, again, neutral atom, same number of protons and electrons. But here, we've got 18 electrons versus 17 protons. So if we add those together, we end up with this minus one overall charge. Right? When you gain electrons, um, it's going to become more negative. All right, so we're going to do a couple practice problems together, um, and you can just follow along here. So a couple steps here. First step, determine the number of electrons in the atom. So that's just in a normal atom, okay? Um, and then our second step, we're going to add or subtract electrons depending on the ion. So remember, ions have different number of electrons. So how do we uh, determine the number of electrons? Well, we start with the atomic number. So if we look at calcium, and you want to pull up a periodic table, calcium has 20 protons, which means it also has 20 electrons. Now this is a normal calcium I'm talking about, but now we have a plus 2 here. So what can we do with that plus 2? So if we have a positive ion, it means we're taking away electrons. In fact, we're going to take away two electrons. So here, calcium is going to have 18 electrons. 
Okay. What about for lithium? Okay. So I want you to try this one. Um, how many electrons would lithium plus one here have? All right, so hopefully you looked up lithium and you saw that it normally has three electrons. But since this is plus one, we're gonna take away one of those electrons. And so our final answer should be two electrons. Okay, go ahead and try tellurium minus two. Uh, I'll give you a hint. You should look on the right side of the periodic table to find tellurium. And with a negative ion, you're gonna add two electrons to however many electrons it normally has. So go ahead and try that one. How many electrons would this ion have? You wrote 54. 54 is the correct number of electrons. Okay, so you'll have a bunch of practice problems to try this out. But again, the key thing here, if it's a positive ion, you're going to take away electrons. Negative ions, you want to add electrons. All right, next we'll talk about isotopes. So ions have different number of electrons. Um, isotopes will have a different number of neutrons. Um, atoms of an element always have the same number of protons. So for example, carbon will always have six protons. Okay. Something like helium will always have two protons. The atomic weight is an average of all the different isotopes, and that's why uh, we get a decimal number. Okay, this is one way in which we write our isotopes. So we would write our symbol here, in this case a giant X. Um, the mass number goes on top, and the atomic number goes on the bottom. Remember to get neutrons, we can just subtract those two numbers. Um, so mass number on top, atomic number on the bottom. This is also known as our standard nuclear notation. Um, again, mass number on top, and atomic number on the bottom. One way to remember this, uh, the mass number is always going to be bigger. Think of the word massive, which means big. Um, again, to get neutrons, you would just take the difference, so top number minus the bottom number. Again, you can practice this on the worksheet. Here we're looking at a few hydrogen isotopes. So the main idea here is that you should notice all of the hydrogens have one proton, but a different number of neutrons. So you'll figure that out on your worksheet. Again, in order to get neutrons, all you have to do is subtract top number minus the bottom number. Okay, a second way to represent our isotopes is to use this hyphen notation. So you see this hyphen notation. Um, the mass number is going to be written after the element name. Okay, so in order to find the atomic number, we're just going to find our element on the periodic table. So for helium-4, right, I might not know the atomic number of helium, but if I looked at my periodic table, I'd see easily that helium always has two protons. So two different ways to represent our isotopes. Um, you should be familiar with both, be familiar with writing both. Okay, and lastly we'll do an example of our isotopes here. So it says here, write the nuclear symbol of chlorine-37 in standard nuclear notation, then determine the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. So I'm going to help put this, so chlorine, Cl, and they give me the mass number, so I'm going to go ahead and put that on top, and then if you look at the periodic table, what's the atomic number of chlorine here? If you said 17, 
you are correct. Okay, let's keep practicing. How many protons does this isotope have? How many electrons? Lastly, how many neutrons? All right, let's check our answers here. Should have 17 protons, 17 electrons, and if we take the difference, 20 neutrons. All right, you've got tons of practice problems to work on. Um, please have a periodic table next to you. I recommend printing one out, um, the one I posted, really clear to see. Otherwise, you can look at your textbook. Um, at the very back of your textbook, you should have a periodic table, uh, or you can use ptable.com, but keep in mind, uh, for quizzes and tests, you won't be able to use that website. All right, and just a few reminders, if you have a cation, positive ions, you want to take away electrons. If you have negative ion, anions, you're going to add electrons. All right, I hope that was helpful. Um, as always, make sure to ask me questions if you